Welcome to the scope of work short form training. This form must be completed by each public water supplier or designated representative seeking an emerging contaminants in small or disadvantaged communities grant, commonly referred to as the EC SDC grant. The scope of work short form, referred to as the SOWS, is required for systems in disadvantaged communities. If your system is not in a disadvantaged community, you must complete the scope of work long form, abbreviated to the SOWL. A link to the SOWL training video for the SOWL form will be provided in the description of this video after it has been published. Applicants should note that the submission of this scope of work does not constitute a binding commitment by MassDEP or the EPA to award a grant. Please review the overview, eligibility, and submission and review process sections before completing this form. When completing this form, be aware that all required fields, marked with a red asterisk, must be completed. Also remember that this form must be completed by using the tab key to move through the document. To go through this form's requirements, we will be using a fictional water system created only for the purposes of showcasing how to complete this scope of work. After reading through page 1, scroll to page 2. For the first four sections of this form, A, B, C, and D, you will be entering basic information about your public water system. Section A, Applicant PWS Information. This section requires information that is included on most MassDEP forms. You will need to include your PWS name, the PWS ID, and select your PWS class, which may be a community, non-transient non-community, or a transient non-community system. In our example case, the PWS name is Example Water Supply. The PWS ID is 2345678. And it is a community water system. Next, enter the city or town your PWS is located in the population served by your PWS, and the unique entity identifier. For our example case, the town is Marlboro. The population served is 8,000, and the unique entity identifier is ABCD12346-7GH. The unique entity identifier, or UEI, is an ID required for all entities that receive federal grant funds. If you do not have a UEI, you must register for one at SAM.gov. All PWS will need a UEI number prior to receiving any grant funding. Please see the double asterisk note at the bottom of Section A for more information on obtaining a UEI number. Section B, Legally Responsible Party. The legally responsible party is the individual who has the ultimate authority to ensure that your system is in compliance with federal and state drinking water regulations and grant contract conditions. This may be the owner of a private facility, a town or school official, or other similarly authorized person. If you are unsure of who this party may be, you may refer to the Secretary of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts business entity search website, which is provided here. You will now need to enter the legally responsible party's name, which may be the individual's full name and or the company name. Then enter the street address in line one and line two if needed for the individual or company's business address. Enter the city or town of the legally responsible party, the state, and the zip code. Our fictional legally responsible party is the town official, John Smith. His work address is at the Town Hall, 123 Hall Lane, and the city is again Marlboro. We are in Massachusetts, and the zip code is 01752. Section C, Authorized Representative. This section is for systems to note who the authorized representative is. The authorized representative is the representative of the applicant who will sign for, accept, and take whatever action is necessary relative to the project. In this section, 
enter the full name of the authorized representative and the representative's title. In some instances, the authorized representative may be the same individual as the legally responsible party. Our fictional authorized representative is the water superintendent of the town. Their name is Jane Doe, and their title is water superintendent. Section D, primary point of contact. This section must be completed with the information for the primary point of contact for this project. This person will be Mass TP's contact to discuss day-to-day -day management of the project as needed. The person may be the authorized representative of the project or another individual. Enter the contact person's full name, their title, and their phone number, email address, and address, including the street address in line one and line two if needed, the city or town, state, and zip code. The contact information should be their business or work contact information unless the individual has indicated that their personal contact information can be used for work-related communications. In our case, the primary point of contact is the primary operator. Their full name is Mary Jackson. Their title is primary distribution operator. Their phone number is 222-222-2222. Their email address is mjackson at examplewatersupply.com and their address is the work address, 80 West Main Street, Marlboro, Massachusetts, at the zip code 01752. We will now begin to include information specific to your project in the following sections. Section E, Project Type. First, you will need to select all applicable project categories. If you are unsure of what activities may be applicable under these categories, you may go to the EPA's ECSDC grant implementation document and read Appendix D for examples of approved activities for categories 1 through 9. Appendix C of the same document will provide examples for category 10. The link to this document is provided at the top of this section here. If you have selected other, please specify in the text box in question two. For our example, we are connecting two small PWSs to the larger municipal system. The smaller PWS will no longer be separate PWS, so the project is consolidation. We will select category six for consolidation. During this process, we will also be upgrading and raising the elevation of a pump to above the 100-year flood elevation. To pressurize the system enough to serve the consolidated systems and address flooding conditions. This project also requires planning and design, so we will select Category 2 as well. If you selected Category 6, Water System Restructuring, Interconnection, or Consolidation in Section E, Questions 3 and 4 will apply to your project and responses are necessary. If this is not applicable to your system, you may skip these two questions. In our case, these questions are applicable. Question 3. If this project includes interconnection, restructuring, or consolidation, are multiple PWS participating in this project? If yes, check the box next to yes. If there are not multiple PWSs involved, check the box next to no. Note that each participating PWS receiving an ECSDC grant must complete a scope of work for their portion of the project. If yes, you will also need to complete the table below. If you select a no for question 3, this table does not apply to you. We will be checking yes and head down to this table. In this table, please provide the PWS ID and the names of all participating PWSs. You will also need to identify if these PWSs are receiving or providing water through an interconnection or consolidation, if they will be doing construction related to the project, and if they are being awarded separate EC SDC awards. 
If any of this is not applicable, mark the option as NA. If you need to list more than four PWSs, please use a separate sheet and attach it to this application when submitted. There are two other PWSs that are connecting to our system, so we will provide their two names and IDs. They are Example Elementary School, ID 21111111, and Ocean Avenue, PWS ID 23333333. Both PWSs will be receiving water from the municipal water system, so I will mark both as yes. Neither of these PWS will be doing construction, as example, water supply will be doing all construction. So we will mark both as no. And the EC SDC grant award is only being awarded to the example water supply. So this will also be no for both. Question four. If this project includes the interconnection, restructuring, or consolidation of a PWS, is there a principal PWS for contracting and invoicing purposes? If yes, please check the correct box. If no, check the box next to no. Note that if the answer is no, then each PWS will be contracted and invoiced separately. If the answer is yes, you will need to provide the principal PWS ID number and the name of the principal PWS. For our example case, there is a principal PWS and it happens to be our PWS. I will check the box next to yes and enter our PWS ID number and our PWS name. If another PWS was the principal PWS, I would enter their information instead. For those that skipped over questions three and four, we are now back to questions that are applicable to all PWSs. Question five. If this project will have a public health impact on sensitive populations, please identify the sensitive population. You may select multiple population types if applicable. These populations may consist of a childcare facility, a school, a medical facility, such as a hospital, doctor's office, or urgent care, or another sensitive population. If other is chosen, include a description. In our case, one of our PWSs involved in the connection or consolidation project is a primary school, so I will select a school as a sensitive population. Section F, Project Details. For this section, you will need to complete the questions with information specific to your project. First, please enter the project title. Then you will include your project start date and end date. Please use a two-digit month, two-digit day, and four-digit year format for both the start and end date to be consistent. Our project title is connecting two small PWSs to the municipal water system in Marlboro. Our start date will be September 1st, 2025, and the end date will be coming in April 1st, 2027. Include the project cost here as well. If the total cost for this project is greater than the proposed grant amount, you will need to provide a breakdown of costs by funding amounts and identify the types of funding in Section H. Our project cost is $170,000, which is also the proposed grant amount. Next, question one, describe your project. In this section, provide an overall narrative of the project, including an estimated timeline and description of the work to be completed. If the project is planned in phases, note each phase and an estimated timeline and costs for completion. Please also note any permits that will need to be obtained from MassDEP. If the project is already in progress, specify the remaining eligible components of the project that you are requesting funding for. In Section G, you will complete a more detailed budget breakdown and deliverables. Then, for Question 2, you will need to mark whether the project is a reimbursement project. If this project is seeking reimbursement for work that was conducted between July 1st, 2023 and today, please check the box marked Yes. If work will not begin until after the contract is fully executed, check the box marked no. Our project will not begin until next year, so this project is not considered a reimbursement project. Therefore, we will select no. If your project is a reimbursement project, you will also need to provide a description of the work performed. 
This may be similar to your previous project description, only covering work already performed. Next, at question three, list the emerging contaminants that are being addressed or will be addressed by this project. You may find a full list of emerging contaminants that are eligible on the EPA's website using the link provided here. Our project is addressing an elevated level PFAS above the Massachusetts maximum contaminant level. So we will list PFAS as the emerging contaminant the project is addressing. Next, for question four, enter the census tracts that will benefit or be impacted by this project. If you are unsure of which census tracts are impacted, instructions on how to identify these tracts can be found on the Climate and Economic Justice screening tool, as well as the tool itself by clicking this link. To find the census tracts, I will click the link and be directed to the Climate and Economic Justice screening tool. I will then type in the address of our PWS. Our fictional PWS, Example Water Supply, is located at 80 West Main Street, Marlborough, Massachusetts, and the PWS serves the area surrounding that address. When I type the address in and press the search icon, I am redirected to the census tract. To the right, I see the tract number 250-173-21300. I will enter this number into the text field. Comparing this census tract to my PWS service area, the PWS only serves this census tract. However, your PWS may serve multiple tracts. Be sure to compare the census tracts and map to your PWS service area and provide the numbers of all census tracts that are served by your PWS. You will only need to click on each tract and view the number on the top right of the screen to find the required information. Section G budget and deliverables. This section should be completed by all applicants using the separate budget form provided. Here is the scope of work budget form. Similar to the scope of work, the first section, section A, must be completed with PWS information. In our example case, the PWS name is example water supply. The PWS ID is 2345678 and it is a community water system. Next is Section B, Budget. This section must be completed using the table below. The budget should identify the items or services for which you are requesting funding from MassDEP. This may include the following examples of services included here. The description of expenses should be consistent with the categories provided in the scope of work and the EPA EC SDC grant implementation document categories 1 through 11. These categories should be included in the first column when you complete this table. In the second column, include a description of the expense, and in the third column, provide the estimated cost. Your fourth column must be used to explain how costs were estimated and a justification for these costs. Explanations may include descriptions of the major tasks performed, hours of work per task, hourly rates, cost of equipment, and so on. For our example, we will add in work for Category 6, PWS Consolidation. The smaller PWS will be connecting to our water system and will no longer be using their own wells. We will add a 6 to Column 1. To Column 2, we will describe the cost. In this example, the cost is for the installation of piping, so water service meters, valves, and miscellaneous. For the third column, the estimated cost is $19,000. In the fourth column, the cost was estimated through the prices provided by equipment manufacturers, an estimated amount of hours to install the water main, and hourly rates of staff. The consolidation of the PWS will also include the cost of abandoning the existing well on the property. For this row, the category in column 1 is also 6 for consolidation. The description is the abandonment of the existing well on the property. In the third column, the cost is estimated at $1,000. In the fourth column, the description includes that this cost is estimated by the hours of work, estimated by task, the hourly rate of staff, and the cost of the material required to fill the well. Here is an example of a fully completed table in Section B. 
The next section is Section C, Project Schedule and Cost Table. In this section, you must complete the table provided below. This includes the start date and completion date of the project in two-digit month, two-digit day, and four-digit year format. These should match the dates provided on your scope of work. Our start date will be September 1st, 2025, and the end date is April 1st, 2027. You must also include the total cost of the project and the eligible cost of the project, which will be covered by this grant. For some projects, the eligible cost and the total cost of the project may be the same amount. For other projects, there may be additional work that does not meet eligibility requirements of this grant, or the total cost exceeds the awarded grant amount. Be sure to review these categories to ensure you are aware of what work is eligible for this grant. The total cost is $170,000, which is the same as the eligible cost, $170,000. Lastly, Section D, Cash Flow Projections. In this section, identify the project's projected quarterly activities and expenses. If quarterly projections are not currently available, divide the project's costs evenly over the length of the project. In the table provided, you will need to list the months and year applicable and the eligible costs occurring during that time period. For this example, we will complete this table for the projected timeline from September 1st, 2025 to April 1st, 2027. The first quarter for this project will be September 2025 to December 2025. The eligible costs for the first quarter of expenses are $10,000. Your completed cash flow should look similar to this, with each quarter listed or a similar time frame if the quarterly projections are not available. Be sure to check the total of your quarterly eligible costs in this table match the total eligible costs provided in the previous sections. This form, after it is completed, must be submitted with your scope of work to the Drinking Water Program Director email account. Now we will go back to the scope of work for section H. Section H, climate resiliency. For question one, if your project addresses climate resiliency in some way, select the types of natural hazard risks, extreme weather events, and or resiliency risks that your project will address. You may select multiple risks and events if applicable. These risks and events are listed below. If you have chosen other, please describe. In this project's case, we will be addressing inland and riverine flooding through the, our project, so I will select inland and riverine flooding. If your project does not address climate resiliency, check the box at the bottom of question one here. Question two, if this project addresses climate resiliency, you will need to provide information regarding the natural hazard risks or extreme weather events and resiliency components that are addressed in the project, including the percentage of the grant directed to the address resiliency. Include the description in the text box below. For our fictional example, I will describe the conditions of the town and how we are at a higher risk of flooding because the pump station serving the neighborhood where the project is taking place is below the 100-year flood elevation level. When consolidating the two smaller public water suppliers, we will be raising the pump station elevation to combat this. I will also include the percentage of the grant directed to address the resiliency. Section I, Certification Statement. This section must be signed after you have read the full certification statement and agree with this statement. This section must be completed by the authorized representative with them printing their full name, their title, and the date and then signing the document. The representative here must match the authorized representative listed in Section C. The PWS authorized representative is the water superintendent of the town, so we will provide this to Jane Doe, who will review this and provide her full name, her title as water superintendent, today's date, and her signature in one of the approved methods. MassDEP accepts three types of signatures, wet signatures, or those that are pen to paper, digital signatures such as through DocuSign, or a digital signature using a mouse or similar stylus. MassDEP does not accept signatures that are typed in. 
Jane Doe prefers to sign it by hand, so she will print this document, sign it, and scan the documents to upload them back onto her computer. After this section is finished, the form is complete. Please review your scope of work and the budget form to ensure it is completed accurately. After it has been reviewed, you may submit this form to MassDUP via program.director-dwp at mass.gov using the subject ECSDC grant and your PWS ID number. Please complete your SOWS form and attached budget form within 30 days. Technical assistance is available to all PWS to answer questions or assist in proper completion of the scope of work forms. If your PWS has any questions about completing these forms or the grant program or needs technical assistance, please contact MassDEP via program.director-cwp at mass.gov or 617-292-5770.